Hello, welcome to our service today. We'll be thinking about what it means to be unleashed by the presence of God. What does being in the presence of God mean to you? How do you feel it? How do you know that he is here? Well, a good place to start is to invite him into the moments that we're in, the place where we are. It may be our home or somewhere else. So let's pray now, inviting the Lord to be with us where we are. So, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus who died for us and rose again. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who comes to bring us life and to be alive in us. Lord, we invite you here now. We pray, come Holy Spirit, be with us as we worship. Be alive in us today, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. When I stand before your throne, dressed in glory, all the joy I see my heart. No more tears or broken dreams Forgotten is the mind Everything as it was meant to be And we will worship Worship Forever in our presence We will sing And we will worship We worship Him And every smile is to the King Come to the time in our service where we recognize that we have done wrong or failed to do good but we can come to God who loves us and who will forgive all who come to him so I invite you to join with me now in the responses that will appear on the screen so let us pray 
we have not always worshipped God, our creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to our next song and I invite you to get your slingshot ready as we worship. It may be that you want to sing, that you want to dance. It may be that you want to get your slingshot ready or you may be throwing those prayers, throwing those rocks. So let us worship God together now as we remember what he's done through his people and through his servant David.
week is from Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 19. Meanwhile Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he had found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus for three days. He was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man, 
and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, some, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptised and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. I wonder how you felt seeing um, pictures on the news of thousands of people gathering on our beaches, the ones nearest to us near Bournemouth and on the south coast. Perhaps you um, have seen um, pictures of other countries as well of people gathering. I know in the United States people this week have been reflecting on what they should do to limit the spread of coronavirus and how we can combat it as a community together. What have you felt? How have you felt as you've seen these pictures? Well, it made me think of um, why people uh, behave in this way. As I've gone to Newbury, as I've shopped at the local supermarket, I haven't seen many people wearing masks. People are seeming to keep their distance, which is good. Um, keep maintaining that social distancing. But there aren't many masks being worn. And it made me think, why are people behaving as if everything is OK, as if lockdown is finishing? And I think there are two main things. One, um, I think, to a lesser extent, is that people can think, I'm going to be OK. They think it's not going to affect me. And uh, whatever is good for me is good. So people think of what they need themselves. They want to get out. They want to meet other people. They want to enjoy themselves. They want to um, escape the stress of lockdown. Perhaps they want to go shopping. And so they go. And they go to the beach. They gather in places where uh, people want to go for walks and relax. Another reason, I think perhaps a deeper reason is our craving for what is familiar and for what we consider to be normal. It's something that has really changed our lives, lockdown, and it's been a challenge to many, many people. And I wonder what if um, you were told today that it had all gone away, that coronavirus was no more? How would you feel? What would you do? Well, I think for many, that is what they're doing. They, they feel that the lockdown is easing and they can do something about it. And it's a way of holding on to what is familiar, what from the past. And if you like, returning to what we think of as normal. And that's interesting. I mean, what is normal? Why do people want to hold on to it so much? And it's a question that the church and church leaders at the moment are reflecting on. What are we returning to? What are we uh, thinking of as church at the moment? What will church look like in the future? It's a question for us to reflect on. But today I want to focus primarily on that sense of what is our foundation? What is it that is our basis for being unleashed? Where do we start from? What, if you like, is our starting block in the race? And Paul is a really good example of this. As he was travelling around, he was a learned scholar. He was a Pharisee. He was somebody who had studied the scriptures, who knew them so well. And he was using his knowledge in combating this new sect that threatened his faith, the sect of the followers of Jesus. And he was hunting them down 
so that they would be found and punished and killed. And he did his job with um, real passion and enthusiasm and commitment. And we find that he's on the road to Damascus and his foundation, he feels, is very solid. It's based on um, hundreds of years of wisdom and accumulated knowledge about the scriptures and about God and being the people of God. And for him, that is a rock that he can depend on. And so that's what he does. He puts that into practice, just like the people who go to the beach and go to the shops the people who don't want to wear a mask, they're relying on the foundation of what went before. And yet in this um, moment of his journey, he encounters the risen Christ, something he was not expecting, something that completely changed his worldview. It turned what he thought upside down and changed him forever. But it also took what was already there, his his motivation, his commitment, his passion, his faith, his knowledge, his wisdom. All of that was taken and used by God. But what did God do in that moment? Well, Jesus speaks to Paul and Paul is afflicted with blindness. Um, His sight is impaired. He cannot see. And because of that he has to rely on the care of others so one thing that god does in a moment of challenge in a moment where god is changing us and changing things he brings us to a place of rest and that's really good news for us at the moment because so many people are um feeling tired and complaining of lethargy, the lockdown lethargy that people are experiencing at the moment. There's so much change to process, to deal with, and that can be a real challenge for us. And it can be draining and our energy levels drop and we feel tired. Many people feel exhausted. It's reported that um, ministers, church ministers all over the world are feeling tired because of the changes that they faced and the different ways they're having to work. And it may be the same for you in your situation that you've been feeling tired lately. Well, God begins with encounter. He he encounters us. We encounter him and we experience his presence. And that can be different for each of us. It may be an incredibly overwhelming experience, a life-changing experience. It may be something a lot more subtle. It may be that still small voice or that light in the darkness or that wind just blowing gently through a moment in our lives, through the place where we are, through us. It may be a sense of peace. It may be a thought or a word. God reveals his presence in many ways it may be through the scripture as we read the bible or as we communicate with other christians but that presence god expects us to rest in his presence at the moment of creation we learn that god created everything and then he rested and that day of rest was not just so that um we would recuperate on the sabbath but it was meant to be a day of encounter a day that we spend in the presence of god and it's the first day of the week and so we begin the week with rest in the presence of god we begin the week with encounter and that encourages us and revives us and refreshes us and enables us to carry on through the rest of the week So that is how things are meant to be. So that encounter that Paul had with Jesus changed him. It changed everything. It meant that he had to rest. And then God spoke to others. And God may use other people in our lives too to uh, work through us and help us to be where God wants us to be. But that encounter was the foundation of what came after so the 
being in the presence of Jesus enabled Paul to then uh, be healed and then move on and to proclaim the good news about Jesus in a very powerful way. People listen to him. They recognize that there was something different about him, something special about him. They were amazed at what he could share. So what was different? Well, that encounter changed what became the foundation of Paul's life. And the more time we spend with Jesus, he will transform us and our foundation will become him. So as we're faced with uncertainty, as we're faced with changes in the lockdown, as we're faced with uh, anxiety about uh, COVID-19 and, and about other things, about our safety, our family, our friends, as we wonder what the future will be like, our foundation can be Jesus. And we can rest in that presence too. So is Jesus your foundation? Is his presence something that you've experienced, that you can rely on, that you can draw on to give you that place of rest, to renew your strength, your energy? How we react coming out of lockdown, I think will depend a lot about what our foundation is. If your foundation is Jesus, then you can rely on him. You can ask him for what you need. You can draw on his strength, his power. His spirit, the Holy Spirit, is available for us. And I'd encourage you to invite the Holy Spirit to come to where you are now and to give you those things that you need. It may just be to renew your strength today. I encourage you as well, do not despair about how other people are responding to lockdown because it's just a sign that they have a different basis for their life. Their life is founded on something else. We need to trust in God, trust in Jesus and keep him as our rock, our foundation and he will help us to get through this. And he can help others too, and we can point others towards him. I'd like to finish by reading a few words from Psalm 103 to encourage us and as a reminder to us how God is our foundation. So these words from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Amen. May God bless you today with his presence and may you always draw on that presence, on his love, on his peace on his grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is we will never say You so much
God is on our side. We will make her worthy. I'm better than I am. This week's craft we're going to make some origami sunglasses just like these They're ever so simple to make and uh, I'm going to show you how okay so first of all we will need to start with an A4 piece of paper and uh, these are the dimensions we're going to need them to be um, it's normal width on the paper so 21 centimeters but the actual length we need to cut it down to 26.6 centimeters wide so you can see I've got my line here and I've just started cutting on there but in true Blue Peter style I have one that I cut up earlier okay so you start by taking this top corner here and covering it pointing it to point on the other side like that and smooth down your paper and fold all the way along that fold there and the next time you take this side here and then line it up with that side, that corner on there and then again fold it nice and smoothly and then you need to open the whole thing out again and then this time you need to fold diagonally just like this and if you see you've got two points on the top here okay so what you need to do now is you take the bottom long edge here and fold that up almost almost to the truss there just below it and then crease it up just like that and then do the same again in half fold it down again just like that and once more so it's getting a bit tough by the time you get to there lots of pushing and smoothing and it's done okay and then you'll also need to take the little pointy corner here and just fold it up just a little bit like that on each of them. There we go. And then you need to take to the side here where the uh, glass is met there. You'll just need to fold that in just like that. And then again on the other side just like that. And then turn it around and there are your sunglasses. And so if you want to decorate those, um, you could decorate the, the side frames on there or on the front, that will be great. So have fun folding and making your sunglasses. So we heard from the book of Acts that Paul, through his encounter with Jesus, 
had his sight, his vision changed. And the blindness that he experienced, when it ended, it was like scales fell from his eyes. And the craft today helps us in our prayers to think about how God can change our vision, our sight, how he can help us to see people differently, to see events, to see people and situations as he sees them with his love, his compassion, his grace, and also how we can see things that we need to change or challenge. So I hope that you have your glasses that you've made. I'm sure yours look really good. And the first thing we're going to do is to pray with our glasses on. I invite you, if you've made some, to put them on. If you haven't, don't worry. Uh, you can close your eyes or you can look somewhere, uh, look on one spot and think for a moment. What are the things that we find uh, need to change in our lives? It may be things that we don't want to see anymore in our lives, things about ourselves. Or it may be not just things about ourselves that we feel we want God to change, but it may be that things about our situation or about our world at the moment that we would like to change. One thing that we can do is not only to ask God for forgiveness for ourselves, but it's also possible to say, God, forgive us. Forgive us, including me and others who get things wrong. Forgive us for our lack of care for others, for the vulnerable, for the sick, for the needy. Forgive us for when we get things wrong. Forgive us for when we judge. So that might be what we need to fall from our eyes today. And so I encourage you to say that prayer. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive us. Lord, change my vision. Change what I see. Change how I see. Holy Spirit, come. Change me by your presence, we pray. We pray that those things will fall from our eyes like scales. Amen. And it may be, unlike me, you may have decorated your glasses. It may be that you want to decorate them to make them colourful, or you may want to change them so that you can either look through them or what's on them are the things that you would like to see. Maybe people that you love or places that you like to go. Perhaps those things that you haven't been able to do during lockdown. The glasses can change our perspective on things. It's like looking at the world through a rosy tint. God can change our perspective. He can become the lens Jesus can become the lens of how we see things. We see things with his eyes. The Holy Spirit can do that for us. And so I invite you now to place your glasses back on and to ask God to help you to see with his eyes, to have the heart and compassion of Jesus, to sense the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray, come Holy Spirit, change us and transform us, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. It may be that we need to ask forgiveness for the ways that we've looked on others. It may be that we need help in what to pray for. So I encourage you during this week, Ask God to help you to see things to pray for, situations and people. It may be on a broad national scale. It may be on a very personal, one-to-one -one situation. Perhaps a friend or a loved one. Whatever it is, may God bless you today and this week. May he transform you and may your life never be the same again. Amen.
And as we come to the end of our time together, a prayer of blessing. May the peace of Christ, which is beyond our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be on you and all those you love today and always. Amen. <laughs>